Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast with both Jose and Ryan. Um, Jose is the man with a topic today. So, Joe, what are we talking about? We are talking about Regret 3 from the book Five Regrets of the Dying. And this one, I'm going to just show you the book. So that's there and TikTok as well. And this regret is, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Dun, dun. So I know you guys love talking about your feelings, right? You saw me wince in the chair when you said it. Actually, I said, just set TikTok up. Take TikTok up. I said, these guys are going to hate this one this week. <laughs> Look at this. Ryan joins for the first time in six months to do a podcast, and it's about feelings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a way to remind me to not come back. <laughs> oh, Ryan. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Right, so let for initial thoughts what, what so talk to me about that so so is that is this a regret you're you're, you're thinking about you, you might so what's have what's the read what's the whole title of it again because the word feeling struck with me and i just forgot every other word you said <laughs> uh, listening skills lee listening skills here we go <laughs> i wish i'd had the courage to express my feelings i suppose is in places where you know you feel a little bit upset or you're, you're angry with someone you're not you know you, you're not letting them know the true how the how things have affected you or whatever i expect it's on that um and you know living your true authentic life right and expressing the feelings and how you how you should be living and how you should be m walking through your life or accelerating through your life really um so that's what i'd say it would be about it's about when you're in a conversation you know can you let people know about where you right you are right now and uh, if something's upset you would you tell them i suppose in a conversation no matter who they are would you do that i suppose it depends on the situation right but talk to me about that any any thoughts that come up for either of you on this uh nothing major for me um because i don't really like talking about my feelings <laughs> ryan's like i'll just sit on mute for this one <laughs> yeah, he, he, when i asked ryan ryan's been away for the podcast for a little while and i was asking him, how's it going he goes it's going all right how's life yeah it's all right and he goes ryan so, i mean he goes how are you doing joe i'm doing all right i'm doing all right bless him yeah. things are going all right though that's that's the point though isn't it it is the point. Yeah. Are you are you being honest about how you're feeling about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Goodness me, here we go. Yes. Do you want me to save you, Ryan? <laughs> Do you want me to jump in and save you? Am I being yeah, I think I am being honest about it. I think I'm I think I'm okay. You know, life's good. Positive at the minute. I've got things to work towards, things I'm grateful for, things I'm happy with, things that I'd like to change, but it doesn't mean that I'm not happy about because I want to change them it means I've got things to work towards. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I've got. A, you got anything? Yeah, I've got a, a, a hodgepodge of thoughts for you on this. Hodgepodge. That's hodgepodge. a new word. Is that word of the go. week? Hodgepodge. Yes. Yeah. Do you like it? So at the moment, my current TV watching. Do you want to take a guess as to what my Netflix show is? I'm watching. I'll give you one guess, and then we'll move on because it's boring for everyone to hear that. Oh, I don't know. Simpsons. Oh, Simpsons. Netflix, but good effort. Um. Uh, uh, no idea. Bridgerton. Bridgerton. I would, I would never have got that. Yeah, that's you why I wanted to get out there. there. You could give me, you could give me fifty <laughs> guesses. I wouldn't have got it. Have you been influenced by any chance, or is that something you actually really wanted to watch? Well, no, I was. It came from because we both do it. Where we're like, oh, I think you'll like this, and I think you'll like this. So Shard watched it and said, oh, it's really good. You should watch it. And actually, <laughs> really like it. It's, yeah, you've been influenced. It's it, great. Well, yeah. it's cre it's by the same production company that make my absolute favourite show ever, which is Grey's Anatomy. So I'm, um, you know, I was it's through an open door anyway. But my it's beloved really good. loves Grey's Anatomy. Oh, just it's my favourite. Really, my yeah. favourite well, show, number one on my list. Absolutely. You're the first. You're the first man that's openly said they like Grey's Anatomy. See, I'm. I want you to know that. I'm comfortable with. No, my my cousin, Jose AJ's baked. Great bakery in Hailsham. You'd go and visit it if you are in the East Sussex area. His he because... is like at Grey's Anatomy as well, one of his top shows oh. too. So I realise he's never said this to you, Griffster, but that's the second one for you. Yeah, to hear no. about. fair enough. But also does great coffee in there, by the way. He does do great. You, do you know what he said? He will say that he's got the best coffee machine in Hailsham. Have you been in there? Then have we talked about? Yeah, this? I've had a couple from there. Yeah, yeah? I've gone in there. Have Support you said to him that you like? I know, I know, Lee Kemp. I haven't yet. I, oh. I, I, I didn't. I haven't yet. I, I'm, I'm just waiting for the right moment. Just say, are you age? He listens. He knows you. He listen. He was. I saw him last week. He might hear this, and he was talking about the podcast with me. Really? And podcasts. Oh, okay. Listen to other podcasts. If you if you say you're Joe from Inspiration Nation, he'll be all over that. Really? All right. Hundred percent. All right. Well, I get a coffee for the next time. <laughs> Well, see, I, if I AJ, I'll, 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 uh, I'll do that. But go anyway, on, then, you're going to say, I've gone sorry. off a complete I'll tangent there. So in, in 
Oh, I'm echoing really bad for you, Joe. Watch your speakers. Oh, really? I could hear myself. Right, so um, in Bridgerton, there's it's drama, romantical drama, I would say, if that's a category. And there's a lot of conflict that goes on and a lot of it is drawn. I'm sitting there watching it. I'm like, if they just talk to each other, they wouldn't have this problem. And then eventually they do talk about what they're feeling and everything kind of resolves itself and it goes on. And I say that, I'm like, that's why I just need to talk to each other. And I think that's something I try and do, but personal life and then work as well. I think one of the things actually I work on there is I'm very, I am an emotive person in that way. So if someone's annoyed me or I'm pleased with something, I'm equally keen to talk about that and share those feelings. And sometimes you've actually, I want to take a step back because you've got to be a bit more, sometimes being really reactive like that isn't great. And we've talked about it in different ways in podcasts and stuff. But then as we joked at the start, if it comes to that in the moment stuff, I'm doing my lead jump around thing. I think I'm very good at reacting with my emotion and sharing what that is. In terms of the whole I love you type of thing with family and stuff like that and that's that's not there we do, and as a whole we don't do that we've talked about that before on here as well so i feel like i'm a living contradiction that in some environments in some ways i'm like heart on my sleeve and then there's other areas and other times where i don't share those feelings and i dare say that later in life that will probably be a regret for me well i was going to ask you the question that is exactly what i was going to ask you so if we fast forward to the end of your life right so you're on your deathbed and you know you say you know in your family you said you don't you don't you don't say to each other you love each other your mum your dad all your all, you know, all, all, all your relatives what 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 comes up for you i don't and i'm saying that question i instinctively i'd say well of course but actually i don't think so i and yeah you know, this is unique and personal to my situation but i think we all know how we feel we just express it in non-verbal non-tactile sometimes non-nice ways sarcasm mm. is, is our love language i think i would say I'd never have guessed because <laughs> I get a lot of that. <laughs> so I know it's a, it's, a, it's a loving affection. That's yeah. good. I love it. Yeah, I love that. That's what it is. Yeah, Sar- think... Sarcasm is my love language. If that if that yeah, is I... a chapter in the book, we'll ask Mark Draker about it. He's all over love languages, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He is. Absolutely. And uh, I was going to just say, from my perspective, I've made a really big effort on this because my dad is one of my past way. Um, doesn't like talking about feelings really at all. But I always say to him in my text, love you, kisses, all that stuff. Because I am very, like, I'm a bit like you. I do wear my, I've got to be careful as well, Lee. You know, depending on the situation, I have to be careful because I am quite emotive. You know, I can be, it, usually if someone says something to me, I really find it difficult to hide it on my face. I don't know else, but I, it literally just comes out. And I try and I try and hide it, but it's like people know. And it's, and it's something I'm trying to work on because in some situations, it's just not helpful, as we talked about before in the podcast. So for me, it's, I'm really making an effort, especially with close well, I'm, I am very comfortable, actually. If I went, to, if I asked myself the same question about, it, if I went to the end of my life, and you know, would I regret not sharing my feelings about that? I love you things. I wouldn't. I, I have said it, and I've said it multiple times, and it's one. I don't know what triggered it, because well, I said it to my mum as well. So I don't, I don't regret anything about. You know, I think your mum's gone now. I did tell her long, lots of times that I did love her. So, so I am very much on that train about trying to tell people I love them. Now I don't get this perfectly, because you know, like everything you know maybe in work situations you know i try and be as honest as i can but we do have to weigh up where we are and what the situation is and that's i think and, that's the other side of the coin on yeah, this joe go on. which is go like on. you said there's the, the instinct is we'll say it more but i do if, you know if something's gone really good or i realize it has there's that instinct to be like yes but then maybe you get a bit more data and you realize it's not quite as good as you initially put out there so there's that time play and it's, and it's the other way around sometimes you can react negatively and sometimes it might be completely genuine or not mm. genuine. Correct. You might have the right point, but, you know, blowing up about it isn't the right way to deal with it. Or actually, yep. you might have reacted in the moment, then you calm down and realise you completely overreacted, but the ship sailed. So I guess there's the, the regret of being too open with your feelings potentially or not channeling it the right way or not taking a step back and realise, maybe I better just calm down here. I'm being a bit OTT. In fact, that's one of the things that I'm really trying to work on. It's like actually one of the things that I put, you know, I'm, I'm doing a review at the moment because we, in our corporate roles, we have reviews, right? So one of my things is to step away from the computer. <laughs> step away from the, step away from the machine. I think you said this, Lee, actually. I think I picked it up from you. It's like, because I think there was something you talked about in the podcast. You talked about there was something that, that triggered you a bit and you, what you did is you stepped away and you went for, you, you did something else and then you came back and you said, you're glad you did. In fact, my sister's done exactly the same thing. They've written an email. Oh, yes, yes, this, I remember. And, and, and come back and go, oh, I'm glad I didn't send that. And I, I suppose we've got a bit off track about, you know, 
I wish I'd be, I suppose it's the same thing. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. So yeah, is that... it's the yin to the yang on the conversation, Joe. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to think, you know, so th- there must be, t- so would, I suppose the thing is, for me, I'm just trying to think, I'm going to try and look at through the things. If, if, I, if I accelerate to the end of my life, because this is really a significant thing, we are going to all die at some point. And the Stoics talk about, and I think I mentioned it references before on this, but the Stoics talk about that they meditate on on death as part of every day. At the end of the day, they meditate on death and say, well, look, you know, so encourage them to live their best life the next day. So maybe this is a bit of a practice for me to acknowledge the day and think, okay, have I really been my, I suppose for me, it's like really been my true self, which I really do think I have been much more since doing the podcast and expressing expressing it much better than I used to where I'm upset with something. I'll try and do it much more constructively. But like yourself, we're not, when something's like, if I'm in a session and things are going well, I will express, oh, that's really good. I love that. But like you say, when the data comes out later, is that always the right way to do it? I really like that as well. So I'm very, like I say, I'm quite, I can be quite reactive. Um, but I, I am always going to be very true for what, where I am in the moment. So if someone asks me, how are you feeling? I will actually tell them now. Not When I was younger, I never used to tell them. We talked about that last week about the confidence thing. We talked about that. Yes. Back in there when I was younger, I wouldn't have said that. But now I would definitely say, if you said to me, now if we were in a meeting, in a work or anywhere in life, you said, well, how are you feeling? Like even now in the podcast, if you said, I'd, well, I'd say, well, actually, I'm having a really terrible day. I would be honest with you. I'm not, you know, if you ask, I am going to tell you. I and mean, I think that's where I've got better at it. Um, I think for me, the work is probably more of a, you know, corporate work situation, trying to be less emotive and actually stepping away from machines and not having the initial judgment to, to react to something. I'm very much better at it, but I think it still needs that work. Um, but I, I would say, if I ask this question, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. I definitely think I'm expressing my feelings more than I ever have. But in a, in a way, this, you know, in a way in my life right now, I, I, I feel I wouldn't regret that. Like that. I really do feel that right now. But yeah, anyway, any thoughts from you guys on, on any of that? I'm just trying to cower away. There we go. I was, I was waiting feelings. for that silence to see if you stepped in. <laughs> silence, of course, is good for a audio podcast. Yeah, apologies. <laughs> um, I think we can all be better with like talking about emotions and stuff, feelings. And <clears throat> I'm in a relatively new relationship, and that's been a test because you have to talk about. And you guys are uh, the phrase "seasoned pros" in relationships probably is a bit harsh, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, that would be a complete overstatement as well, I feel. Yeah, I, I really think it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's always a steep learning curve, Ryan, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it, it's, it's not just about explaining your emotions. It's about explaining your emotions in a way that doesn't upset the emotions of the other person. That's that's the bit I think I struggle with because, you know, something, something sometimes something will be wrong and it might be work or it might be something completely trivial that's got nothing to do with the other person. But obviously it makes you annoyed or it makes you frustrated and it makes you... Um, Aggy, or you know, whatever phrase you want to use, and sometimes it's hard to explain those emotions without offending the other person at the same time. So that's that's one of the biggest balances I found because it's not just talking about my feelings; it's talking about how my feelings affect, or how our feelings affect the people closest around us as well. Right? It's all well and good speaking out, but we have to do it in a way that's constructive to the relationships of the people with us. That's it. It's expressing stuff in the right way, which is it's as Joe said it. It's always a learning curve. I think you're always yeah. But as long as you're conscious of it and you're always trying to take lessons from things, then that's the that is the right track. But it is that balance. And like you said, Joe, you started this by saying we all hate this because we don't express it. But I think there's it's situational. There's ways you do and ways you don't. And I guess feelings I'm great with affection might be the thing that's more of a a, a, a challenge, shall we say, than feelings. But again, that you know it comes out in different ways. And we did our personality and love language test many times ago in the in the archive inspirationation.org.uk we should do something like that again just for our own development oh yeah people. see how we see how we've changed and stuff and everything yeah that'd be good well, except, that? except for joe joe's so old and stuck in his ways it'll be exactly the same sure. yeah never changing um, <laughs> i've got that ray dalio one that i said you could do because i've done that one I, oh you've done it lee haven't you i think um but yeah it's that one but which was the one we did was it the first 16 personalities wasn't it was we did one, 16 it? personalities and we did another one as well but i can't remember what that one was now can we do one where we spent 25 episodes talking about the results that no. might have been was 16 one? personalities yeah hold on it gonna... might have been fill in some time yeah. i'm going to trawl through the archive because we need to know this now so i just wanted to give that shout out on tiktoks um right so i've got uh okay how are you feeling from andrew uh, medica so we've done that um brilliant okay uh apparently you wish alex happy birthday there you happy go happy birthday alex 
Happy birthday. birthday Alex. There you go. All done just for you. Thank you for so much for the loves and the likes on the TikTok. 202, look at that. And Rising, thank you so much. There you go. You got the shout out. Really appreciate it. Um, thank you for that. Yeah. It's always Anything? really good when we get to acknowledge a birthday <laughs> five days ago on the show. <laughs> Sorry, did we not both text you? Oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? But you've not said it on the show. I know you, you, that's offline. Oh, happy no birthday, one sees Lee. That. Happy birthday. <laughs> Can't just flash a screenshot of your text up. <laughs> <laughs> only joshing, only joshing. Right, let me see where... There, we definitely did a whole run on 16 personalities, but I can't... Yeah, I think you're right, actually, because we talked about... Didn't we individually talked about each of them in a separate episode, I think? Yeah. Oh, one, quite the, um, the, the endurance, which... There we go. How many have we got? 25 rules to live by. Episode 87 is part seven of that endurance run. So some of those got a listen the other day, by the way. So people are enjoying them. Thank you to those out, in the, out there in the nation that are listening to this. Right, Jose, anyway, what in the book does it... How close to what the book talks about are we on subject with regrets of expressing your feelings? Uh, pretty close. I mean, the thing Ooh. is, it talks about, it talks about, you know, it really talks about family. It's more about close members rather than work or anything like that. And, um, and just, uh, you know, just expressing how they feel. And I suppose being authentic is what it comes under, I think. Yeah. In the book. Um, you know, uh, no guilt, um, gifts in disguise, it talks about, I mean, I'm just reading sort of underneath. But I mean, that whole thing of, you know, express, expressing yourself is so important, because one, it highlights what you need to work on what we've highlighted it once we do examine it and look at it closely it highlights what you need to work on um, and also i told you about didn't i about when i was playing football I'd hide hide some of my gifts so i wouldn't want to express the gifts because of the, what people might think and i suppose that is a, a thing about expressing feelings and um now more than ever i'm not i'm not shy anymore i'm just saying that this is what i think i'm built suppressed footballer champion tennis player you're like the super athlete of the group aren't you no no super athletes here i i, I have to add <laughs> uh, um, but I, but that, that's the thing, you know. I think people do have gifts, and I think some people can cover them up, and they shouldn't. Absolutely not. And of course, as I said we last week, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence and arrogance. We still have to be careful 100%. on that line. But you do need confidence and things like that to to excel. There's no doubt about it. Without the confidence, you just won't you won't fulfil the gifts that you have. And no. you, you do need that. And and you look at great people, and they do express themselves, express their things. In fact, Novak Djokovic, he won the. Um, French, French Open. Open. That's thank you. I was just trying, <laughs> like, come you. to me in time. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, and he was he was talking about, and he was expressing his feelings, you know, to the crowd after he won his twenty third Grand Slam, which is an absolute record. And he was talking about, you know, real be right. It was really inspiring. Actually, I wish I'd recorded it and made a video of it because it is really cool. I expect someone had done that already. But that is the pinnacle of anything of expressing feelings. And but also just to give a, a tip of the hat to you, Lee, he was talking about the present moment and being in the moment and just enjoying. I really, I really thought you were going to say he, he shouted out Lee in his. In his <laughs> yeah. And you know what? He shouted out Lee. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but it was really interesting because he, a person of he's absolutely super determined. The mindset's incredible. And he's going back to like his feelings and being in the present moment. You know, the thing you talked about at the pen last week and being in the moment and talking about visualization and talking about you know, visualizing. Because when he was a child watching, you know, tennis at seven, he wanted to be the world champion. Uh, and he's, he's come to life. You know, he's, he's made it happen. And he's now 36 years old and won his 23rd Grand Slam. That's unbelievable. And beating so many younger players. So, yeah, just thought I'd. So this is this is stuff is not woo woo. This stuff is real. Like, and he this did is it real because stuff. of me. That's my takeaway from this week. Is he did it he could, because of me? He could, do with a, he could do with a couple more because Rafa's given it one more year next year. And is he? Yeah, Rafa said that he's taking the rest of the year off and giving it giving it one more year next year. Is so. he what going for the whole tour? Or is he going on the just the French or is he going for the whole slams? I suppose. No, I think I think. I, have, well, I, don't, I don't follow tennis that closely, but I'm sure I saw that Nadal's taken the rest of this year off because his knee or his hip was playing up again. He said next year's going to be his last year and he's going to give it um, a good go. So if Djokovic oh, wants so... to... Because isn't, isn't he on 22? Isn't Nadal on 22? So yeah, so that's why Djokovic just... Learned. But I, I don't see Djokovic... Not, I think he's going to go further. I think he's going to get... Well, he, he, tends to, he tends to be his best at Wimbledon, doesn't he? So... Yeah. Uh, Thank you, you would, everyone, you for joining us for Tennis Talk, the podcast about <laughs> tennis. You know what? I'm so. Do you know what? Can I just say, 
Right, Did I'm I get so the right sport your, there, by the way? Your knowledge. I am so <laughs> impressed with your knowledge. There's a lot more I'm than mine. I'm a sports guy. I'm a sports guy. <laughs> that sports guy. There's a talent right there, the sports guy. Ryan is a sports guy. I love it. For curiosity yeah. purposes... Episode 64 and 65, all the way back from June in 2020, are 16 personalities, episode one, and 16 personalities, episode two. What was the month? It was June, June. So we're three years later to the month. We are. In fact, yeah, because wow. it was June. I've got to work my, my wonky eyesight. There we go. June the 3rd. And June the eighth, twenty twenty. So you're quite right. Three years down the line from them. Should we redo them? Do you think we should do redo? Yeah. Re- re- There's a bit I redo- agreed with redoing them, but I'm thinking, has it been long enough? It's been three years. That's incredible, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should redo them. Just see if we come up with the same result. See, we could be quite an interesting experiment, couldn't it? To see if we do change or whether we, even though we ask the questions, you know, does it come out again? If we're talking about feelings, you know, because actually, it's run off the back of that. It's run off the INFJ stuff. Myers Briggs, right? It's kind of it comes off the back of that. So, um, so yeah, it'd be really interesting because obviously, depending on where we sit, you know, we might come out slightly differently. And I was I was a protagonist, if I remember. I was a protagonist, I think, in in that in that. Can you remember? What, did you, what, 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 I can't. You but we'll, we will look them up and we'll do a show on that, Joe. That sounds like a plan. Right, yeah. I'm going to do some shilling now, just quickly for Go everyone on, who's with us. Because if you're listening now, you must like what we're doing. We massively appreciate you. That's what keeps us going. Check out inspirationnation.org.uk merchandise store. Sign up for Jose's newsletter, the most important thing there, and full archive of everything we've done. Check us out on social media at listen to IN, listen T O I N, and just hunt out Jose as well, doing his own things on social media. Just put Jose Neuer, Inspiration Nation, into your Google machine, and you will find him on every platform that has ever existed. TikTok and YouTube, if you find Jose there, hit subscribe or follow or whatever the button is on there, and it will tell you each and every week when we go live on both TikTok and YouTube with the podcast recordings and you can join the people who are joining us now, much like Alex with his birthday. Brilliant. Love that. Yeah. So anything more from you about feelings? Is there anything else that comes to mind? In I terms think, of anything? if I'm honest, Joe, this is about as much excruciating pain as I can deal with talking about feelings. Do you know what? I've, I'm really impressed with it. I know I knew you'd hate it, but actually, you know, you... You're definitely a lot better, both of you. I think really. This. I found that was all right, actually. I'm just, I'm yeah. just le- leaning into my stereotype. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Because when, when I come up with the episode, it was we were talking about. If the, I can't remember what it was. It was, it was about feelings, wasn't it? And I went, oh no, we're talking about it again. But clearly, so much more comfortable now. The, the shows were in the gym doing the reps, or you guys doing the reps, and so you're much more comfortable with it this now. Is it. This each week is my growth plan, and it's working well. Yeah, and that's what it's about, right? This is what it's about. So. I always encourage, I mean, this is what I'd always encourage is, you know, if you are struggling with your feelings, you know, we need to be honest with them. Um, and I'd always ask the question, that is one of the, this is why I love talking about this book, because if we are thinking to make a decision, always just think about, well, I'm at the end of my life, would I regret it? Would I wish I'd done it? I think it's a really good lens to look at things through. Life goes by so quickly that we have to grab every opportunity. And this is what I would love for anybody to get out of this episode and all the episodes, to be fair. We're just encouraging you to reach out and live your best lives and be the best version of yourself. And this is what this whole stuff is all about. And this is why we do it. We do this off our own back. You know, we come here, have a discussion and we want you to take value away from this. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask you, ask you to a couple of questions, if that's okay. Go for it. You've got like three minutes to get them in, so go for it. Right, lovely. Okay, so I'm going to go to Ryan first. You know what it is, and Lee, actually. We also question both of you. So So what's been your biggest takeaway from this conversation? I'll go with that I'm an inspiration to top-level athletes. And there's Lee's affection coming right out there. I love that. I think my takeaway will be be about um, just being aware of how, I don't know what I said earlier, just being aware of how my feelings can affect other people as well. Love that. Uh, and mine is to continue to look through that lens of being on my deathbed. And I'm going to try and do the stoic thing about, at the end of the day, reflecting on that um, and having to wanting to have li- live my best life today and being grateful if I wake up tomorrow and to sort of continue to live my best day every day. And not to think too far in the future and not to think about the past, but live for now. Just like uh, Djokovic said about living in that present moment by having a big vision, but you know, living your best life every day. Uh, that for me is going to be the thing. Lens of passing away and being on my deathbed, would I regret anything? So 
yeah, that's going to be mine. But there you go, Lee. I'm done. Do you want to wrap this Wait, bad are boy we, up? Are we taking Lee's cop out answer as an answer? <laughs> Oh, okay. No, you know what? Thank you, Ryan. You actually right, yeah. Because there's no, you there's up, no you way. Up. There's no way he'd well, take Ryan. that if I gave you that cop out answer. There's no way you'd take that. Ryan, well done, mate. Well done for picking him up. Well done, Ryan. Right, go on. I'm gonna have a, an inward takeaway, which is my just. I suppose my own observation on myself as to how much more comfortable I am talking about these things than I was even six months ago, but definitely a few years ago, and how. I so suppose being in these conversations and us pushing ourselves into this space and this mindset by doing this each week has really changed how I am and my comfort with that whole thing. I love that. There you go. I love, love that. that. I can just... pull it out of the bag when I need to. Yeah, and there he goes, going back to the affection <laughs> thing at the end there. I love that. Like, I've done this whole lovely spill from the heart and he goes, I need to cover this up quickly. Like, it was brilliant. It was like, I was like, oh, let's cover that up quickly. I love that, Lee. It was just so nice. It's so nice. But, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, I just think these are so important, these these conversations. So just keep having them. Let's keep having these conversations, keep sharing the conversations. As Lee says, you know, we need more people to hear these conversations so we can all continue to you know, add value out here. That's what we want to do. And Lee, over to you. On that note, I shall count us down. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch, Catch you guys you later. Guys later. later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you'd want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.